I had uh, become fascinated with the world of flight as, a, as, a, as an elementary school student and uh, determined that uh, somehow I wanted to be involved in that. And, and as I uh, learned uh, more about aviation, I thought design, that, that would be the epitome of, a, of an aeronautical career, to be a designer. And uh, so that's what I, that's what I still thought. Well, they, uh, my, my father was an auditor and uh, he audited the uh, books of uh, county governments or, or across the state where we lived, uh, in the state of Ohio. And uh, so we, we were a transient group. My father moved the family along with him as he moved around the state while we were young. And, uh, and uh, I think they, they were very accommodating. They allowed me to do, uh, pursue my own interests and, uh, and I'm forever grateful that they uh, gave me that freedom. They didn't try to dictate to me what, what I should do or where I should go. The, the test pilot is solving problems. He's looking for inadequacies or shortcomings or uh, barriers to uh, substantial safety and increasing performance in, in flight. And his job is to uh, identify those problems and assist in finding a solution. So it's a problem-solving job. And uh, you're always working with the unknowns. And I found that a, uh, a fascinating part, part of my uh, career path. Uh, I, I really enjoy the opportunity to contribute in some way to uh, the solution of problems. The history of humanity has been slowly increasing the, the, the boundaries of knowledge and knowing more and more and more and feel comfortable inside there but at the edges it's always going to be a challenge and we uh, we needed something to uh, simulate landing on the moon the moon has no atmosphere so you're flying in a vacuum and the gravity is much lower so the characteristics of a flying machine in that environment are very different than they are here on Earth. And we felt we had to understand those variations and be able to feel comfortable in flying the lunar module to, uh, in, to the surface of the moon in, in the actual conditions. So this device uh, did, did provide very good training and, uh, and experience in that mode. Uh, unfortunately, it was a complicated machine with a lot of uh, different rockets and wires and claptrap of all this, and uh, it consequently was subject to a malfunction. And uh, one of those malfunctions snapped on me one day, and I lost my control system. And uh, you know pretty quickly that uh, it's it's time to go and part company with, with your friend. And uh, I did that, and uh, it. The ejection seat worked very well, fortunately, and, uh, and I bit my tongue, but that was the only real damage. NASA was a new organization, only about four years old at that point, had done a lot of thinking about this. And they identified the lunar landing as perhaps the only way we could catch up with the Soviet Union. And as the president said, uh, we, we were going we to get in this game. He was saying, this is, this is a new ocean around it. This is the new ocean and we must sail upon it. And we must be a leader on it. And that caught people's imagination because at that time uh, we had the uh, ideological competition uh, between East and, and West and uh, concerns about the future of, uh, of all humanity on, on Earth. So it was a very big thing, not just technically, it was uh, sociologically a very big thing, and the challenge was enormous. So to be able to get the, the agreement of, uh, of, the, of not only the, the government, but the will of the people to go along with that idea was quite striking. I was, uh, I was the alternate or backup commander for the flight around the moon, Apollo 8. And as soon as they took off, I was out of a job, of course. And the uh, boss called me in a few days later and said, would you take the third flight down the, down the road, uh, 11? No. Eight was in the air. Nine was in the hangar yet. It hasn't, it hasn't started to fly. And 10 was 
uh, the lunar module had not flown. Uh, there was no way we could predict what each of those flights would do. It was going to depend on the success and the accomplishments of each, each flight along the build-up period. But Apollo 8 worked well, 9 worked well, 10 did far better than expected, took a lunar module actually around the moon and, and tried out its propulsion systems and its navigation systems and communicating with two spacecraft simultaneously. All these things were accomplished in just those four flights. And uh, so a month before the, uh, the launch of Apollo 11, my, my, uh, my cruise flight, uh, we decided we were going to, we, we were confident enough that we could try an attempt uh, on, on a descent to the surface. And uh, I should say that uh, I thought uh, we had a 90% chance of getting back safely to Earth on that flight, but only a 50-50 a chance of making a successful landing on the first first attempt. There's so many unknowns in that descending from lunar orbit down to the surface that had not been demonstrated yet by testing and uh, it was a big chance that some, we didn't understand something in there properly and we had to abort and, and come back to Earth without land. It's a risk-reward uh, equation and uh, you're able to accept a level of risk so long as it's commensurate with the roar reward that you will get by achieving the goal that you're after. Absolutely. And uh, that's kind of the that's kind of the balance you always make.